Welcome to the NTN Nightly, I'm Nisha Charles. This edition Stomp Stories. The Ministry of Health and Wellness prepares for the arrival of U.S. Naval Ship Comfort. Major rehabilitation works are being completed at schools island-wide in time for the opening of the new academic year. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports, and the NTN Nouvelle Arquion. As St. Lucia prepares for the arrival of the United States Naval Ship Comfort for its humanitarian mission in September, the Ministry of Health and Wellness is putting measures in place to facilitate the free medical care which will be provided by the ship. The ship intends to be in St. Lucia from September 23, 2019 to October 2, 2019. Officials involved in preparing for the mission spoke to the media earlier this week about the preparations thus far. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Merlin Fredericks James says all the health professionals will be vetted before practicing in St. Lucia. We do have in St. Lucia laws and regulations which speak to the licensing and registration of medical professionals, of health professionals, um, pharmacists, and there are various councils. So there's a medical and dental council which is going to review and vet all of the um, doctors and dentists on the program. We have the Allied Health Council, which would look at the lab techs, the physiotherapists, and any other Allied Health professionals. We have Pharmacy Council to, to vet the pharmacists, and we have the St. Lucia Nursing Council, which will be vetting the nurses. The ship will be berthed at Port Castries and will have two walking clinics. Medical care is free of charge, and residents are encouraged to take advantage of the service. Medical Officer of Health, Dr. Sharon Belmar George, reminded the public of the services which will be offered at the walk-in clinic. Internal medicine, pediatrics, general medicine, dental services, optometry, including the provision of spectacles as glasses, physical therapy, women's health, dermatology, and pharmacy. The estimate, according to the U.S. team, based on the number of um, medical staff that they will have at those clinics, they could see up to 500 persons at each site per day, that is, walk-in clinics. The ship will also provide diagnostic services and surgical care. These services, however, are pre-scheduled and require a referral from a physician or a request from a local doctor. They have available a CT scan, ultrasound, x-ray, echocardiogram, laparoscopy, chemistry and hematology as well will be done. Stool urine testing, all of those are available um, on, the, on the boat. They will be working, they are working very closely with our local um, solution health practitioners. Both on the boat, we have a list of, we have a team of nurses and physicians who will be a part of the team on the boat working alongside them seeing our persons. Following on from St. Lucia, the ship will visit Trinidad and Tobago, Grenada, St. Kitts, Jamaica, the Dominican Republic, and Haiti. Thousands of students across the island are preparing to return to the classrooms this coming week for the academic year 2019-2020. Over the summer break, the Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations, and Sustainable Development has been undertaking significant rehabilitation works to have the school plants ready. While most schools will reopen on Monday, September 2, 2019, a few have been delayed. Janelle Norville reports. There are approximately 73 primary and 26 secondary schools in St. Lucia. Before independence, schools in St. Lucia were managed by different religious denominations, in particular the Roman Catholic Church, the Seventh-day Adventist, and Methodist churches. Today, all public schools are funded and maintained by central government. As a result, many schools go years without any significant maintenance works. The Babano Secondary School was built in 1999. Last year, the school had to be closed temporarily to allow for roof repairs, mold remediation, and to solve some pestering electrical issues. Dr. Gail Rigobert is the Minister for Education, Innovation, General Relations, and Sustainable Development. The teachers were very incensed about the condition of the school, very literally having to vacate classrooms sometimes with the slightest drizzle because of the state, the infrastructural decay of the building. Previous administrations would have allocated 
a million dollars to attend to the repairs of all 100 plus schools. The Mondidor Primary School was built in 1982 and receives a subvention of $4,000 annually. Principal of the Mondidor Primary School, Jacinta August, explained that the school is plagued with a litany of infrastructural problems. Our roof was a major problem. When it rained, the teachers had to use bins and all kinds of things to collect water. And um, in the classes where some of the ceilings were missing, it was so hot that we had to employ other methods to try to keep the heat out. Mm -hmm. Our annex, we had to vacate it. This year, the Grosile Preschool and Primary School, Vidbutai Secondary, Millet Infant and Primary, Monrepo Passias Combined, and the Beanfield Secondary School are some of the schools receiving major infrastructural improvements. From bathrooms to painting, replacement of windows and upgrades, the building technology wing, the Sufra Secondary School will be receiving a significant portion of the allocated budget for repairs. Alton Mondesi is the Ministry of Education's building officer. Definitely, we have not seen this kind of monies put into school. I, I mean, we, I welcome it. It started from last year, and this year we've got the same sort of budget to work with, and I welcome it. Aldin Louis Ferdinand is the Director of Works at the Ministry of Education. The $10 million, a lot of people seem to think that it's a summer program. No, it's a capital program for the entire 2019-2020 school year. Of course, a lot of it happens during the summer period because this is the time where a lot of the students are out and we get a long enough break so that we could do infrastructure refurbishments on the schools. We had a lot of schools um, getting the brunt of that $10 million. Probably 60% of that money would have been spent or is being spent during the summer period. After the site visits, Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chastney reflected on the state of various education plans while reaffirming his government's commitment for greater investment in the sector. I was one of those who was holding back on a lot of, of the work initially um, because I was very... Um, keen on understanding where our education system was going to go and with technology coming in. And then again, the minister took me around to some of the schools and I saw the conditions of basic things, bathrooms, doors, um, roofs. I knew we had to move much quicker. And that's why we found $10 million last year. Um, I was able to get an additional $10 million this year and we're going to be allocating another $10 million next year. The rehabilitation works were conducted by community-based contractors recommended by local government. For the Government Information Service, I am Janal Norville. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. Be aware of and follow water conservation practices. Here are a few tips to help you save water. Wash dishes in a basin of water instead of a running tap. Soak pots and pans instead of letting the water run while scraping them. Check toilets for leaks by putting dye in the tank. If color shows in the bowl without flushing, there is a leak. A leaking toilet can waste thousands of gallons of water. Use a bucket instead of a hose to wash cars and reuse grey water from laundry to water plants. Water conservation reduces energy consumption and strain on the water distribution system. Conserve water whenever possible. And remember, every drop counts. A message brought to you by the Water and Sewage Company Incorporated, WASCO. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sport. Thanks, Misha. Welcome everyone to your weekend update from Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. The National Sports Academy will be open soon to harness the sporting talent that exists among St. Lucian youth and boost their academic development at the same time. Minister responsible for Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development, the Honorable Gail Rigobert, explains the rationale why the Grosley Secondary School became a natural choice to be transformed into the National Sports Academy. Why the Grosley Secondary School? One, its proximity to other sporting facilities, the Darren Sammy Grounds, the, the, the Table Tennis or Tennis Center, the Aquatic Center. But also, Grosley had additional benefits. 
uh -huh. which include that the, the compound still had a lot of unused land and therefore expansion for dormitories, gym, kitchens, etc. The space was there. And the school itself had demonstrated a keen interest in the sporting development of its own students. The school benefits from strong leadership in the person of Mrs. Charles and her team. So all these variables lend themselves to Grosley being the school of choice. Dr. Rigobert also noted there was additional scope for further development of the physical plant when the academy is up and running. Despite not coming home with the championship trophy after the recent Caribbean charity football tournament in Grenada, coach of the boys training center team Alvin Xavier said the behavior of the boys was exemplary and he was satisfied that the objectives of the tour to Grenada were met. No one could point their fingers on, B on, on BTC. We have been model players, modern citizens, nothing to talk about. Whether we got bad tackles, we still got up, played the game. If referee calls were not going our way, we never will add the referee because we had already prepared them for that. And I must say, we have been doing greatly. Um, some of the organizers have gave us that feedback that they see us as one of the more disciplined teams in the, in the tournament. And for me, that's the victory I was looking for. The St. Lucian team returned home on Sunday and were named most disciplined team in the competition. That's your weekend update from Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. The private sector continues to partner with the Ministry of Health and Wellness to promote healthier lifestyles. Nagico Insurances recently collaborated with the Ministry for their second health fair. The Ministry of Health has partnered with Nagico to host a health fair promoting healthier lifestyles and regular screenings. The fair allowed for diet consultations, free screenings, as well as exercise tips. Janelle Alexander Dupre is a family life educator with the Bureau of Health Education. We're hoping to get our numbers and persons screened so they get to know their health status. So, for example, when the persons go and do their blood sugars, that they get to understand where their sugar level is at. And also, since we have our nutritionists on board, if the sugars are within the ranges where we become concerned, then they could go to the nutritionist and be able to get a sort of diet plan. From that diet plan, we also have our exercise people on board. This is the second year that Najiko has partnered with the Ministry of Education to host a health fair. Adele Jabatis, General Manager of Najiko Insurance, explained the rationale behind the collaboration. As a health insurer, we saw the need because we see the rising cost of healthcare in St. Lucia and we understand that not everyone can afford insurance. So we partnered with the Ministry of Health to put on this event to facilitate persons coming in, to get consultation, etc., and also in a more relaxed environment so you could feel free to ask those questions. With some music in the background and you have your family with you, it's a Saturday, and we chose a Saturday because it's a, we understand that a busy work week doesn't allow much time for you to run in and out to get that doctor checkup, a routine checkup. And you tend to put it aside, you tend to make it the last minute priority, I should say. So we wanted to give back, we wanted to do our part and ensure that we at least try to better the health of our nation. The health fair took place at the Najiko grounds in Raidui on Saturday, August 17, 2019. From the Government Information Service, I am Anicia Antoine reporting. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Arcoyon. Si ou jouen an bil ki ho, gade si siten ou kakoule. Se pa tout le ou kaywe, kote siten la kakoule, avan ou kouye ou asko, examine siten la pa kou. E kwi ni mi woa ki asou mita. Pa se vid loa pou 30 minit pou yon neditan. Devi we e kwi ni me woa ki asou mita.
si numéro a changé, si ten la ka coulé. Kouye en ploma pour oger problème la vitman. Ça c'est en commission Rodwasco. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle en Quayon. Monsieur Tan Nisha, Monsieur Madame Département qui nous responsabilité pour information en gouvernement cette ci c'est GIS, à sa vie télévision nationale, puis à NTN, à vous êtes au Nouvelle à Quayol. Vous êtes au Primus Hutchinson. Pour l'école, pays à Opoué, un dégré qui est acceptable, il y a plus de 40 millions de dollars vidé encore pour vous. Quand l'autre saison, l'école commence, le ministre qui est responsable pour l'éducation, on est Dr. Gail Rigobert, a commencé à suivre une nouvelle à Quayol, déclaré que le directif sera sorti à un rapport avant le gouvernement était entré en pouvoir. Selon Dr. Rigobert, le ministère de l'Éducation trouvait 10 millions de dollars seulement pour adresser cette situation à l'école PIA. Il y a vu qu'il n'y a pas de mais il satisfait. Le premier ministre, Honorable Alain Chasté, n'a pas de confiance à lui. Et plutôt, il a levé la main qui a plu, le ministère a été mauvais et qui a adressé comme qui peut cette situation à l'école PIA qui est très critique. Le ministre de l'Éducation a déclaré que, malgré le fait même commencé à adresser ces grandes quantités de la brise de l'école PIA, il y a quand même qu'à faire conquérir et qu'il n'y a confiance. Il y a aussi. L'année de l'école, toujours, qui a des problèmes qui sont bien, bien sérieux, problèmes électriques, problèmes sceptiques, tank, um, toilettes qui ne sont pas à travail, fit à qui ne sont pas bon, um, pour le bois. Et que ces bagages là nous ne sommes pas satisfaits à ces conditions, les corps nous pièces, pièces, pièces. Mais nous allons continuer à faire ça, nous payer. Et euh, l'année en chai pour que nous fassions l'école, l'école qui, pour l'année, pour que nous soyons la qualité et l'attention que nous avons actuellement. Nous sommes tous les gens qui ont été passés. Et ma sœur a changé en commencement l'école l'année passée. La tenue de la petite maman qui a fait une nouvelle parce qu'elle a parlé de la condition de l'école. Et c'est un bon plaisir pour moi, ouais, l'année ça, nous avons fait un bye bye. Et moi, je sais mettre l'école là, Mademoiselle Auguste, il est bien content, nous ça fait qualité de travail ça là. Mais ce n'est pas l'école mondi dont seulement, le ministre a parlé de l'effort qui a commencé pour adresser la situation à l'école, c'est qu'il y a des qui a opéré à présent. Une institution d'éducation sport pour les étudiants qui n'ont pas été en affaires sportives. C'est l'Ocean Sports Academy, ça veut dire. Alors, c'est la première année à nous faire ça, mais sans bagaille, nous savons qu'on s'est ici, nous témoignons de ce qui longtemps, 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 longtemps. L'année, trop de jeunes gens qui ont bien talent et puis, si vous avez une qualité d'opportunité, ça là. Vous avez une paix de l'autre, vous avez fait l'autre bagaille. Mais vraiment, si vous avez une qualité de l'école, ça là, vous avez développé un même sport qui a fait, nou, ka, ki, ka fait bien um, ici et avec l'autre pays aussi. Alors, je crois que avec l'école neuf, ça là, nous avons eu un seul an qui a venu, jeune homme et jeune uh, madame, cette ici qui a fait nous bon plaisir parce que nous avons eu le bénéfice de un bon programme de sport. Écoutez, nous avons eu un autre programme qui a été pour nous plus à ce développement du système de l'école et l'éducation. Et puis, Dr. Rigobert, dans cette ici. Chef officier médical en cette ci Dr. Merlin Frederick James, qui a présenté un rapport à sa visitation de un manoir en l'Amérique qui a offert un service médical qui supposait commencer à offrir un service en septembre ou octobre. 
Pumun kini puisi asista medical apa ya silo Dr. Mulin Frederick sapa kwa mjefwa taka fet. Komset lisi ni awash masala epi Cuba ek Taiwan o si. Ya ajute ki le, les asosiasyo personal medical aset lisi kai examine de gwe kapabilite se dokte ek nos ki kai aboba toa pou fe sete yoni tout si kalifikasyo a ki nesesa ava yo tuve permisyo pou pou ya aset lisi. Pada manua medical sala ape ya, moun kai sa vizite yi pou resivwe tretman medical pou plizye maladi, pa ekzap, pou che, pou dan, etoufman, examinasyon zye, l'opwasyon, tretman pou zanfan, ava min plizye lot. Ek yo pa kai ni pou peye pa yon santim. So, ou kai stan an chay pli aso matye sala, me pou aprezman nou vle tout moun sav ki, tout dokter, tout nos ki ka vini, ka jwen, sa nou ka kwe medical and dental council, ebe nursing council, pharmacy council, yo ka gade tout se papia, yo ka gade tout se qualification, tout bagay pou fe, pou fe asiwe tout bagay an nod, avan nou bay pieson permission pou travay an set lisi. E ka mem lea, kon nou ka di, la ka ini set lisi en, ka twavay an sam epi yo, so yo pa kaye la ka twavay asu am set lise pa ko yo. Dr. Fedrik anose ki la ka ini gwan klinik a l'hopital Owen King. Sa son ni pou fe pies apwetman, me pou moun ki ka ini brize l'opwasyon, pet asu yo, situasyon ka y timyet di fi yo. Se moun sa ka y brize dokter yo pou gade yo avan, ek den pou rifo yo pou yo jwenn l'operasyon. So nou vle akwaje tout moun pou gade pou le se medical ship la ka y vini, ek den nou ka y sa benefit ek tout bagay yo ka y mene. Minis de Afe Agrikultur ek la pech onou ab Ezekiel Joseph Ja fe yon apel pou le kiltivate ek le peche pou este an ekout kom nou ka an sezo se klod nan toujou. E fe apel sa la pou moutwe si po ministeri pou tout moun ki engaje nan kiltivasyon. An ou ap minis agrikol la di ki ini an soulajman de se vel pou eke set lisi sove go kout fwet sa la pa siklon de Orion. Si lo minis agrikol la ta kay bay se kiltivate ako pli tan pou pa we pli me pou si akay yon lot siklon pou plase yo adan proteksyon pou dewe yo. Alo, kon nou ka we, se mouve tan sa la ka vini tiyet pli brutal, i ka kwi asou se kilite vate ya ek le peche pou toujou ve ek koute pou se mouve tan sa la. Amem dita, gouvetman haka travay pou implemente yon asiwans pou sekte agrikol pou etabli primer proteksyon pou la vi agrikol an set de si. Mise madame, pou bout nouvel nou jodi ya, nou ka ypon ti bout a performans ganyi set li siyen an festin kare festin an trinad ek tou bego ki bout pli bonen an semen na Se kon sa a fe a pase, mwen kwe se ganyi se klisi a fe nou bien, fe ban nou bo kwayans an kalite performans la yo fe an kare festa an trinadek tobe go. Se kon sa nou bout nouvel nou, mese medan, mwen kare mese otan 
pour qu'à garder mon camp vite ou je ne puis me considérer qu'on savait la vie n'a pas posé tout l'autre nouvelle en coyote c'est moins souhaité comme la coutume en bonne finis ma semaine pour une bonne proportion et pour mon casser le la rose vive la rose après ça mon camp vie est posé tout niche merci on peut primus and here's a look at what's happening to us weather wise Generally fair skies, occasionally becoming cloudy with a few scattered showers. Moisture and instability in the lower levels of the atmosphere over the region will cause a few showers over the Lesser Antilles during the next 24 hours. A weak tropical wave located a few hundred miles east of the Lesser Antilles is moving westward near 12 miles per hour or 19 kilometers per hour and is expected to affect the region on Saturday. Dry Saharan air in the wave's environment is limiting shower activity with this wave. A second tropical wave, located over the eastern tropical Atlantic, is moving westward near 20 miles per hour or 31 kilometers per hour. A third tropical wave, located near the West African coast, has a low chance of development over the next few days as it moves westward near 12 miles per hour or 19 kilometers per hour. The tide for Castries Harbour was high at 4.04 p.m. and will be low again at 9.21 p.m. The tide for Vieux-Fort Bay was high at 5.11 p.m. and will be low again at 10.48 p.m. The seas slight with waves 2 to 4 feet or 0.6 to 1.2 meters. The sun will rise Saturday at 5.52 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Misha Charles.